Hi, this is Amr Abdigawad, and in this lecture, we're going to discuss osteochondroma. So what are the objectives of this lecture? First, we'd like to describe the pathology of osteochondroma, and then we're going to differentiate between the two important types of osteochondroma, the solitary type and the multiple type. And we're going to outline the management of osteochondroma, and we're going to describe the indications of surgery in cases of uh, osteochondromas. A good source that you can use is this book written by myself and Dr. Naga. So what is the pathology of osteochondroma? Osteochondroma is the most common benign bone tumor. They represent about 35% of benign uh, bone tumors, so they are very common. Um, and they are often diagnosed as incidental finding for radiographs taken for other reason. So for example, a child is running, he uh, hurt his knee, and he gets an x-ray, and then in the x-ray you find osteochondroma of the distal femur. So most of the osteochondromas are actually asymptomatic and discovered as an accidental finding in radiographs taken for other reasons. Osteochondromas can be solitary, so that means it's uh, um, one osteochondroma in the body, or it can be multiple, and the multiple osteochondromas are associated with a syndrome called hereditary multiple exostosis. It's an autosomal dominant syndrome that we're going to discuss in details. Regarding the shape, the osteochondroma can be sessile or pedunculated. Sessile, as we see here in this x-ray, uh, it means it has a broad base, or it can be pedunculated. It means that it has a stalk, as we're going to see later on. And whether sessile or pedunculated, the hallmark of, for diagnosis of osteochondroma in the x-ray is that the medullary uh, canal of the lesion has to be in continuity with the medullary canal of the main bone. So if you can see here, this is a sessile osteochondroma, and if you see the medullary canal of the main bone is in continuous with the medullary canal of the lesion. So this is an x-ray for a child who has uh, multiple hereditary exostosis or MHE. In the multiple hereditary exostosis, there is multiple osteochondromas affecting the skeleton as we can see here. So this x-ray, we're using it to show the difference between sessile and pedunculated osteochondroma. So if you see, this, is, this osteochondroma uh, has a stalk, so it arises from here with a stalk and then it ends here and over this there should be a cartilaginous cap. If you see the medulla of the osteochondroma here is continuous with the medulla of the uh, main bone the same as here so you can see here there is another uh, bidonculated osteochondroma so there is a stock for this uh, osteochondroma the medulla is continuous with the medulla of the osteochondroma uh, it has a, a stock uh, and this is a bidonculated osteochondroma so we have one bidonculated osteochondroma here one bidonculated osteochondroma here uh, if you see here there is another osteochondroma that has a broad base also still the medulla of the osteochondroma is continuous with the medulla of the main bone. If you see here, there is another osteochondroma. The medulla of that uh, osteochondroma is continuous with the medulla of the main bone. So pathologically, the osteochondroma can be sessile or pedunculated. Uh, in both cases, the medulla of the osteochondroma is continuous with the medulla of the main uh, bone. What is the clinical presentation for osteochondromas? As we said before, osteochondromas are very common and they are usually diagnosed as accidental finding in an X-ray taken for other reasons. For example, child with an uh, ankle sprain, he gets an X-ray of the ankle and then you found an osteochondroma of the distal tibia. Uh, this osteochondroma never caused symptoms uh, before. Uh, the second most common presenting symptom is a mass, so the child will feel the mass, so he will feel a mass of the distal femur, uh, and then this is, is a, a bony mass uh, that is related to the osteochondroma. Uh, it may or may not be associated with pain, as we're going to discuss later. So what are the causes of pain in osteochondroma? This is very important because as we said, osteochondroma in, uh, by itself is usually not painful. However, sometimes the osteochondroma can present with pain. Uh, the first cause of pain is the direct mass effect. So if the osteochondroma gets bigger, it will compress the uh, overlying soft tissue and it will cause pain. Or there may be a bursitis over the osteochondroma uh, with inflammation that may cause also pain for the patient. Um, also, uh, if there is a, a irritation of the surrounding tendons, muscles, or nerve that may cause pain. So, uh, for example, osteochondroma uh, of the uh, medial part of the distal femur will be irritating uh, the hamstring muscles, and this may cause pain for the patient. Uh, sometimes, if there is a trauma, it may cause a stock fracture. Uh, the last cause for pain is malignant transformation. So, if the osteochondroma transform into chondrosarcoma, uh, that also will be a painful pr uh, process. So we discussed before the radiographs in cases of osteochondroma. This is the lateral X-ray of the knee for a child with multiple osteochondromatosis uh, or uh, multiple hereditary exostosis. 
Um, and if you can see here, there is multiple osteochondromas that you can see. Uh, remember, in the osteochondroma, uh, the lesion can, as we said before, can be sessile or pedunculated. Uh, in both of them, you will find the uh, medulla of the lesion continuous with the medulla of the uh, uh, bone, and also the cortex of the lesion is uh, continuous with the cortex of the um, uh, bone. Um, also remember uh, that the osteochondroma classically points away from the joint so if you see here is the joint you will find the osteochondroma in the femur pointing proximally and in the tibia pointing uh, distally so sometimes we get an MRI for osteochondroma to evaluate the thickness of the cartilaginous cap. Uh, we do that if there is any suspicious of malignant transformation. And um, usually if the uh, cartilaginous cap is larger than one centimeter, uh, this is maybe an indication of malignant transformation. So if you see, uh, this is a patient who has a huge swelling of osteochondroma. Uh, here is the x-ray picture. Uh, we were suspicious that they may, this uh, large osteochondroma may represent malignant transformation. So MRI was taken and the cartilaginous cap here is only 4.2 millimeter. So this indicates that this is a benign lesion. So you get an MRI of osteochondroma where you suspect malignant transformation. Uh, if the uh, cap is more than one centimeter, uh, which remember you don't see the cap in the x-ray, uh, you can see it only in the MRI. If the cap is more than one centimeter, this may be an indication for malignant transformation. Let's discuss now the treatment of osteochondromas. Uh, so most osteochondromas actually don't require any treatment. As we said, most osteochondromas are discovered uh, accidentally in an x-ray taken for another reason. And these lesions, if they are uh, characteristic in shape, uh, if they were not painful before, uh, they can be safely uh, observed. Um, and no orthopedic referral is needed for asymptomatic lesions. So if you get an x-ray uh, for an ankle sprain and you find uh, there is an osteochondroma of the distal tibia, uh, the child was never complaining before he get the sprain, uh, you don't have to refer this patient. However, if you have a painful lesion, this has to be properly evaluated by an orthopedic surgeon and this needs referral. Let's speak now in more details about multiple hereditary exostosis or MHE. Uh, so multiple hereditary exostosis is a congenital condition. It occurs due to mutation in EXT1 and EXT2. About 85% of the cases are due to mutation um, in one of these two genes. Uh, in general, if the condition is due to mutation of EXT1, uh, the clinical condition is more severe than if it's due to EXT2 gene. Uh, and 90% uh, of the cases are inherited as autosomal dominant. About 10% of the cases uh, are new mutation. Uh, in MHE, lesions um, are variable in size, number, and distribution. However, the most commonly affected areas are the forearm, knee, and the ankle. You can see here, this is an X-ray of the knee of a patient with a multiple hereditary exostosis. There is multiple um, um, exostosis, as you can see here is one. Um, this is a pedunculated one. It has a, a small uh, connection here, um, and then it has a stalk. As you see here, the medulla of the bone is connected to the medulla of the lesion, as we had said before. Uh, you can see now multiple sessile lesion, as this one here. Um, uh, this is two sessile lesion here in the proximal tibia. Uh, another sessile lesion here in the proximal fibula. So as you can see, the lesions are variable in size and distribution. And as we said before, usually they go away from the joint, as you can see here. So uh, the lesion is pointing away from the joint. In all these lesions, as you can see, the medulla of the lesion is continuous with the medulla of the original bone. So what is the clinical presentation for patient presenting with MHE? Uh, one of the most important thing is deformity and forearm is usually the area of the uh, that is commonly affected with this uh, because usually the osteochondroma as you can see in this x-ray affect uh, the distal ulna so the ulna becomes relatively short and the radius becomes both to that direction of the ulna if you can see here this picture so here is the ulna here the ulna is short and the radius continue to grow in this direction so the patient can present with deformity of the forearm so what are other clinical presentation for multiple hereditary exostosis? Uh, the multiple osteochondroma can cause contracture for uh, the joint. Uh, this commonly happens in the knee, ankle, or in the fingers because the osteochondroma uh, can compress on uh, the uh, tendons and cause contracture for the joint. Also, it can cause limb blade discrepancy if the um, osteochondromas uh, affect the growth plate, it will make the bone shorter. 
uh, about malignant transformation, the instance of malignant transformation for uh, osteochondromas in cases of multiple hereditary exostoses ranges from about 1 to 5 percent. Uh, and if tumor happen, it will uh, develop in the cartilaginous part, uh, developing into chondrosarcoma. What is the management for multiple hereditary exostoses? Uh, you do orthopedic referral if there is deformity, if there is limb discrepancy, if there is contracture, or if there is any suspicious of malignant transformation, for example, painful lesion, uh, or if there is a lesion that is now growing after all the other lesion had stopped growing. Uh, and only symptomatic uh, lesions need to be excised. So in multiple osteochondromas, we don't go and remove all the osteochondromas. We remove only the one that are causing pain uh, and discomfort for the patient. Uh, thank you. All my videos for educational purpose only. Please consult your doctor before any decision. Thank you.